Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to start the webinar entitled One Year After the Fall of Kabul, the Current Situation in Afghanistan and Future Prospects. I am going to be the moderator and I am the senior researcher. I am the senior program officer, peace building program of PS SPF. First is presentation by uh, Ambassador Tadamichi Yamamoto, former special representative of the uh, Secretary General for Afghanistan, United Nations. Uh, he was the uh, head of the uh, cultural department and he was an ambassador to uh, uh, Hungary as well Afghanistan, pa Pakistan. He was representing the uh, Japanese representative for the assistance for these areas from 2016 until 2020. He served as the uh, special representative of the Secretary General for Afghanistan, United Nations. Today, he is going to talk about the current situation and future prospects. He has a broad international network so from his vantage point, uh, what is what is he going to talk about? I will be looking forward to his presentation. Ambassador Yamamoto, please take the floor. Ambassador Yamamoto, we would like to hear your presentation. As we introduced uh, earlier on, Ambassador Yamamoto stayed in Afghanistan for more than five years. And at the United Nations mission, he was heading the mission continuing his activities, that is that experience. He has a broad network internationally. I always learn a lot from him. So capitalizing on the uh, network and based upon his own experience, he will be making his presentation. So one year after the fall of Kabul, how does he analyze the current situation? Ambassador Yamamoto, floor is yours. Can you share the screen? Yes, I will do that. Thank you very much for your kind introduction. President Tsunami, thank you very much for uh, joining. And the SPF's uh, introduction was very good and very kind. I will share the screen. Thank you very much. Uh, so this is one year after the fall of Kabul, the current situation in Afghanistan and future prospects. That's the title. As Ms. Horiba introduced, uh, until March 2022, I was uh, the representative uh, of the mission. Taliban agreement was done on the 29th of Fe uh, February. Until that moment, so after three weeks uh, after the signing, I left Afghanistan. When I departed Afghanistan, between the Republic and the Taliban, there will be re rapprochement and uh, uh, re there will be understanding and uh, re reconciliation beginning. That was the hope, but it's not uh, making uh, such a smooth uh, uh, progress. Uh, on the 8th, 31st of August, uh, the US forces withdrew and uh, Kabul fell. So one year has passed. The current situation, honestly speaking, it's a very dire situation. In a way, it was unavoidable because at that time, international community regarded Taliban as a rebellious groups. It was not regarded, and the Republic government of Kabul assisted by the international community would be opposed by Taliban. So they defeated the Republic that the international uh, community supported. So uh, there was a great re reluctance on the part of the inter international community. Also the position where the Taliban was positioned. International community uh, was uh, not uh, accepted as a friend and the international community sort of regarded them as a rebellious group. It was an unfortunate uh, start. It was the beginning, which was rather unfortunate. So in the past one year, what kind of uh, nation building that uh, the Taliban was making? International community more or less so, uh, had a doubtful eyes uh, looking at the uh, Taliban situation, Afghanistan situation. On the side of Taliban, up until now, 
they, the foreign forces occupied the uh, Afghanistan, but now they left. So uh, at long last, they are making their nation building. So they wanted to promote their own thinking. So the beginning was uh, uh, such that uh, there was a huge distance between international community and Taliban. So considering the future of Afghanistan going forward, both the international community and Taliban, both sides have to make efforts to come closer and render cooperation so that they can talk with each other and they can engage in various cooperative activities. So, situation is rather dire. Concretely speaking, you will find understanding the difficulty, politics, economy, humanitarian aspects, human rights, all difficult. Taliban, after the fall of Kabul, they had public statements. So uh, they had the political political committee and they knew how the uh, relationship with the international community would be. So they pledged, or I think it's too much to say pledge, but they stated that four points would be their position. The first point is that Afghanistan will never become the hotbed of uh, terrorism. Number two, there will be inclusive government representing the Afghanistan people, and there will be consideration to the minor minorities. Uh, the uh, former uh, government uh, forces, the uh, police, and the other government officials uh, would uh, receive amnesty and acceptance. Uh, within the framework of Islamic law or Sharia, the women's rights would be respected and freedom of press would be uh, guaranteed. But uh, looking at the past one year, on four accounts, uh, things are not uh, proceeding very smoothly. On the other hand, what about the side of the international community? There are problems. I don't know how to put it. To Taliban, there is a sense of distrust. They did not have trust in viewing at the Taliban government. Therefore, how Taliban was would, would be coming up, so the attitude was more or less uh, wait and see. The winter is coming close, so humanitarian assistance is necessary. So $2 billion is the amount of assistance implemented. It's a huge amount. Regarding this is given the not through Taliban's, but directly benefiting the people because the international community does not trust the Taliban's. They don't want to strengthen Taliban by giving money and the money would uh, be uh, channeled to terrorism. That's what, that's the early economic sanction. It was man maintained when the Taliban occupied Afghanistan. This uh, economic sanction still uh, continues. So Central Bank of Afghanistan that they had in the United States, the four assets uh, were frozen and Taliban is not uh, approved and recognized as a proper government. So in the interest of time, I will be running. I will be going very hasty. On the political front, the most important thing is the domestic uh, reconciliation within the domestic situation amongst parties concerned. The most important thing would be to create inclusive government not necessarily within government, uh, non-Taliban would be accepted. That's not necessarily the case, but uh, various uh, Afghanistan political positions would be reflected in the inclusive government. That is uh, what is uh, meant, especially the Western donor countries have a strict uh, opinion about it. But even my opinion is such that uh, even amongst the Western countries, uh, just as we have ruling parties and opposition parties, uh, so, uh, uh, as a as a system, as a whole, inclusive government that should be made within one year. Uh, the monolithic uh, attitude was uh, taken by Taliban to uh, drive off uh, foreign forces, but uh, there are so many different uh, views uh, held within Taliban. So within uh, Taliban, the mainstreamer Pashtun and other clans. Uh, would have a certain confront confrontation that is uh, becoming uh, prevalent. So 
when on political aspect uh, things are not smooth and smoothly going forward as people wished but here is one point having said so one year it held up it didn't collapse and taliban is confident about that Conf taliban got confidence about maintaining the government uh, in whatever way for one year what should be the evaluation given by the international community that's very important Another thing, because Taliban controlled, everybody ho hoped that the law and order would be maintained. And indeed, it was it was like that. The Japanese NGOs are saying that they can move around freely wherever within the Republic. And from the United Nations people, we hear the same thing. For the last, last one, two months, uh, things have deteriorated, although because the two Shia group uh, uh, Taliban is uh, getting very tough and uh, maintaining very strong attitude. There is reaction uh, coming from uh, Shia and also the ISIL uh, KP's uh, violence is erupting. So the, uh, in August, there was an explosion at the mosque. Even in that uh, context, uh, well, organized uh, resistance uh, force uh, is not something that would characterize uh, uh, Taliban forces. Uh, so NRF and uh, ISIL exist, but still they are not to the extent of threatening the Taliban. Some people are worried that uh, political inclusive, inclusiveness is non-existent and uh, there are uh, less people continuing dialogue and they may resort to violence. Uh, some people are worried about that possibility. So the, I will be quick about this. When it comes to governance, politics uh, is not only high politics, governance is equally important. For the 20 years, the uh, international community kept assistance as a result from the days of rebellion. Governance the system maintained, and it is functioning somewhat. However, at the uh, Republic government, uh, the uh, experts and the uh, technocrats, uh, bureaucrats left, and those uh, remaining would uh, receive very dire treatment, especially women. As the participation is not recognized, so there is a problem still remaining. Regarding budget, Taliban is doing its fair share on their own way. They think that they have made a lot of revenue because uh, less corruption is there, and then the revenue is directly into going into the national coffer. However, at the time of Republic, 50% of the budget that was dependent upon the foreign assistance, so the national revenue would not be enough to provide the service to the people. So medical level is worsening, the brain drain and the capital, human capital is leaving the country. They are being persuaded to come back, but it is not working smoothly. What about the economy? Economy. It's not working, functioning very well. After the fall of Kabul, uh, economic activities are set to shrink by 30 to 40 percent. Per capita GDP is uh, less than 60 percent, less than $350 per capita. Per capita. So uh, economic assistance is being reduced. Uh, so there are certain projects like railway projects and so forth, but it's not uh, making any full-fledged uh, development. As I said, the financial sanction is still in play. The government money is not circulating, and uh, not only that, the private sector banks uh, are reluctant. Uh, they uh, are worried that they would become subject to sanctions. So even not only the government banks, uh, but the public, uh, private sector banks are reluctant. But I think uh, uh, overall, trade is on the rise people's livelihood, more than 70% of the people experienced a sizable revenue reduction, income reduction. And that is uh, triggering the uh, humanitarian crisis. Inflation is uh, uh, more than 40%. Uh, 
more than 80% of the households are in debt, but they have to buy goods. What is important? What we have to take note is that most of the people are living in local areas, region. So the local areas and regions must be supported. The local areas have less productivity. They don't have education. Medical service is not uh, uh, very good. That is the situation. The drought has uh, continued. So food shortage is the problem. However, this uh, dire situation cannot be covered uh, only by the uh, humanitarian assistance. Uh, it will prevent them stand on their feet. Afghanistan population, 22 million, and it is now 39 million. So it is almost dou doubled in terms of the level of uh, population. Without uh, the international assistance, uh, Afghanistan uh, population cannot be maintained. How can we help them stand up on their own feet? That is of extreme importance. Well, I will skip this because of the uh, uh, time. Now, humanitarian assist uh, humanitarian crisis. The United Nations are coming up with uh, concrete numbers. Uh, according to WFP, 50% of the population, 18 million and 900,000 people, will experience a very severe food shortage uh, in the latter half of this year, especially children and pregnant women will be in a very dire situation. In all 34 provinces, uh, there will be very severe food shortage. It's a contingency. International assistance is not really coming through. Now, there have been an appeal of being put forth by the United Nations of 4.4 billion, but only 40% have been collected because uh, uh, before oh, there had been uh, the money uh, that being had funded, which was larger than had appealed by the United Nations. But right now, even though uh, the problem faced by Afghanistan is the worst ever uh, for or uh, the head of whole world, uh, the money is not coming through. Uh, so United Nations is once again trying to, to make a worldwide appeal. Now, about the human rights situation, there are many reports on infringement of uh, the rights of women, and I'm sure or you are well versed on this, but there are other problems as well. As I have had mentioned, there has been uh, uh, the amnesty uh, or pardon uh, the being contemplated uh, after the Taliban uh, has uh, uh, brought under her the control, but there has been torture, uh, detention, assaults, and execution without going through any legal procedures uh, for the former government as well as former armed forces related people. And even with uh, the promise of uh, the amnesty or pardon, uh, these the reports uh, continue uh, to, uh, to come through. And uh, we were expecting uh, that the secondary education for uh, girls uh, that was uh, had started. But in Kandahar, uh, the ministers uh, that have uh, that been invited uh, where the Supreme Leader, Hai Butler, uh, has presided. And uh, it was decided uh, that uh, the uh, education for uh, the girls, uh, the ban will not be lifted. And even though the girls were already at schools, uh, they were told that, that uh, the education will not be given. So this is a very, very difficult and tough issue. Now, as for the freedom of expression, although this is not widely reported, for example, uh, the re press reports overseas cannot uh, be reported inside Afghanistan, as this is a very difficult situation. What about the relationship with the international community? Any country have yet never recognized uh, Afghanistan uh, on de jure basis. What, uh, what has been promised uh, that uh, there will be inclusive political system to be established 
and that Afghanistan would never be made a hotbed of terrorism, and that the rights of the girls and women are to be respected. They need to aspire to be a member of the international community. As the United Nations Charter says, what the international community should aspire for, uh, to maintain uh, the international peace and stability, and no discrimination uh, by uh, the faith uh, or by race and so forth. Uh, and uh, the freedom uh, the must uh, uh, be uh, respected. So if Afghanistan would like to become a member of the international, co international community, they need to commit to all these uh, tenets. They don't have to do it the 100% because not every country uh, have been able to achieve that, uh, but they have to have a shared awareness of what need to be protected and respected. Thus, without uh, all these things happening, uh, no country would ever be able to recognize Afghanistan, uh, the Taliban, uh, the government, uh, as a country. Now, as I have mentioned earlier, uh, for the Shias, uh, they had, uh, have been uh, watching uh, that uh, uh, what the Taliban has been doing. Uh, so uh, the humanitarian assistance that are being continued but the development assistance, they are quite restricted and limited on a government-to-government -government basis. Not only economic sanctions prevail, but the United Nations do have uh, the sanctions uh, on limitation of travel. And uh, the, as uh, the situation had have progressed, there has been some relaxation of uh, the certain sanctions, but they have gone back to the very uh, tough sanctions. In order to have a good dialogue with the Taliban, what kind of sanctions are necessary? And as an international community, you would have to review once again, uh, going back to the original uh, point. But having said so, uh, the Western uh, the countries, of course, they do understand uh, that uh, they need uh, to have uh, the national assistance and have to respect the dignity uh, of the Afghanistan and uh, they would like uh, to continue with humanitarian assistance. And for reasons, reasonable stability, they would have to continue uh, and see progress uh, in its relationship with the Taliban, uh, the government. But those countries who have fought with the Taliban, like the United States, uh, France, United Kingdom, or Australia, uh, and so forth, they have many people who have died uh, in the process. So there are a lot of mistrust and distrust still remaining in such countries. What about the neighboring countries and Islam uh, states? They are becoming increasingly important to Afghanistan. And including China and Russia as well. And these countries, because of the actual necessities, they are proceeding with a dialogue with the Taliban. For example, international conferences that have been held and they have invited uh, the Taliban uh, to discuss on how to improve on the relationship and what should be done as uh, a dialogue and uh, what can the international community do. Uh, first conference was held in Pakistan and then Iran and in China and more recently in Uzbekistan. Not only in the neighboring countries, but Western donors have participated. And from Afghanistan, minister, ministers have participated in having exchange of views. But unfortunately, no full-fledged progress is seen yet. But the steadily, the relationship uh, is being uh, continued and being accumulated. Taliban is making use of these opportunities to try to explain and not only protect their position, but they need to consult in good faith with the international community. As we see it, those neighboring countries and Islamic states and the role of OIC, I would like to pay my due respect that they are are engaged in very important process. Especially the Islamic states, uh, the what the Sharia says, and uh, strike a balance with the, what the, are necessary in the modern world. And I'm sure all those Islamic states will be able to give good advice uh, to the Taliban government. And the many uh, countries, uh, they had, have already stated uh, that uh, the Islam law does not prohibit uh, the women 
to be given education, the girls to be given education. And of course, there has been a very a tough criticism over the United States as well. Uh, China and Russia are criticizing. They are perhaps overarching themselves because of the Ukrainian situation in the background, perhaps. So you don't need to, to depend upon those great powers. Uh, Japan and the neighboring countries and Islamic states uh, need uh, to uh, do its best, do their best. And for the United Nations, uh, the new uh, special representative of uh, uh, the Secretary General who has been appointed on the 2nd of September. She is from the Kyrgyzstan and she is well experienced. I'm sure she will do good. United Nations, it is very difficult for United Nations uh, to make a political move. So humanitarian assistance and trying to improve on humanitarian situation. So those are, are the points of focus and what is necessary for economic collaboration. So they are trying to work and approach the different countries to do something with the, the economic sanctions. So the role of the neighboring countries and Islamic states are ever more important. More unfortunately, uh, the incident over Zawahiri recently that Taliban has been hidden uh, in uh, the a high had end uh, the housing area. This is in violation uh, of the agreement with the United States. Um, perhaps uh, uh, it may be barely uh, in agreement, uh, but it is against uh, the agreement. Uh, so uh, the US government, because of this, have already made it uh, public that uh, if funding is provided to the Taliban, it may go to the hands of uh, the terrorists. So it is very, very difficult uh, these days uh, to provide uh, the necessary funding. So uh, I believe that people have become aware that uh, uh, the uh, United States uh, intelligence and uh, uh, the, the, their ability uh, to, uh, to watch over the situation seems to be uh, very highly advanced. Now, as I have said at the outset, in order to move forward in a positive uh, manner, both the Taliban as well as the international community both needs to work and make efforts, especially for the Taliban. What the international community is asking for. Taliban needs to be aware of uh, uh, how the international community works. So as a member of the same community, they need to share the same ideals for the whole of the mankind, such as human rights, as well as uh, the human dignity and peace and stability, to share uh, the issues and cooperate in trying to solve the problems. Uh, they need uh, to show uh, that uh, they have the will to do that, uh, that they are willing to coexist with the international community. There are three things they, they need to do. They need to, uh, to show us the vision of what to come in the future, 15 years from now or 30 years ahead. They need to have clear vision, not only the political regime, but how to relate with the neighboring countries and the international community, and what should be the way to go for Afghanistan economy. Not just uh, Islam, uh, the Sharia, uh, the law, tenets will not move for people. And they need to gain the understanding of the international society. And then the international community will be willing to cooperate. And what uh, will be needed as cooperation will be understood by the international society. And because the future will be clearer, they will be willing uh, to cooperate. And the second thing is they need to increase understanding over international community. The Supreme Leader, uh, Hai Butler, has said that they need an inclusive society. On the 2nd of July, uh, they have uh, invited 4,000 to 6,000 uh, the religious uh, the leaders. And he has stated that we are independent state. The foreign country should not order us around. This is our system. We have our own decision to make. And uh, we are delighted that uh, the foreign forces uh, that have uh, withdrawn, that we are able to establish our Islamic 
Emirates. And what that he has said is very true, but it does not mean that he can monopolize because Afghanistan is living in a international community, but that has not been clearly shown yet. So on the third day of the conference, the ulamas, some of the ulamas uh, have walked out of the conference. So they need to be more humble and understand the international community because the international community is not trying to persecute Afghanistan. So how to institutionalize in their relationship with the international community. On the other hand, the international community needs to respond. We should not force on our way of thinking, our system and liberal democracy not to try to export as is because they would not accept it. So they need to understand the reality of the Afghan society, the tradition as well as their customs and practices what is acceptable in the Afghanistan society and what is actionable. They need to think about that. Even in the Western society, in creating the society, it took centuries to create the Western society. We need to have patience and good understanding for Afghanistan. And the Islamic states, the neighboring states could lead the dialogue the lead the discussion and the United Nations, which revere diversity, should also be in the lead. And uh, Japan do understand liberal democracy and we are a member of Asia. And uh, we have become a modern state starting as a developing nation. We do share the, the history of that and we do understand what is happening in Afghanistan. So perhaps we can do something as well. Thank you. In considering the future of Afghanistan, the speaker has given us a great insight to our future thinking. As he mentioned, Islamic countries uh, will build the relations and how to engage Afghanistan in the international community. That, that's, that was one of the uh, topics that he said. Now, we have a speaker from uh, Malaysia, and he will be exactly talking about that aspect. That is uh, Mr. Dato Ahmad Azam. Ahmad Azam San is uh, the uh, Global Peace uh, Mission Malaysia chairman conducting humanitarian assistance in Syria, Afghanistan, and other countries. Uh, also from 2019 to 2022, he was uh, elected as the commissioner of the Independent uh, Permanent Human Rights Commission of OAC. From September 2021, he became the uh, special advisor uh, to the uh, Malaysian foreign minister on Afghanistan. Dato Azam uh, visited uh, Kabul in July. So uh, he had uh, con uh, dialogues with the uh, executive officers of Taliban, and he was hopeful that he would be uh, back to uh, uh, Afghanistan in October, including uh, those elements, uh, uh, including the recent situation of uh, Kabul. He can talk about uh, his uh, opinions. Uh, in, media, in media, we don't uh, see Malaysians' uh, engagement and involvement uh, with Afghanistan, how Malaysia analyzes the situation. As Malaysia, what kind of assistance uh, is she thinking? How, what kind of relationship uh, would Malaysia like to build? I think uh, this uh, viewpoint is a little different from what we are used to here uh, through the ordinary media. So, Dato Azam, the floor is yours. Dato Azam, thank Thank you, Akiko, uh, Excellency Ambassador Tadamichi Yamamoto. Thank you for the insight. I have uh, not much left. <laughs> we have covered almost every point that I want to talk. Uh, but anyway, uh, what I'm going to do is to present how I see it uh, based on my two visits to Afghanistan. Uh, first on February after six months, uh, the fall of Kabul, and then secondly, uh, in the last July, that means 11 months after the fall of Kabul, uh, then I can make uh, a kind of a comparison after six months and after 11 months 
uh, these are what I'm going to share with you. Uh, what we call uh, the 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 experience uh, being there in Ground Zero in Kabul, went to Jalalabad to see how the situation outside of Kabul uh, and uh, delivering uh, what we call medicine, foods, uh, and uh, shelter uh, for the poor. Uh, that there are quite a lot uh, in, in Kabul, uh, especially outside of Kabul. But uh, complementing on what Ambassador Yamamoto has mentioned, uh, to uh, analyze uh, one year of uh, the fall of Kabul, uh, you have to be fair, uh, what we call, uh, to make uh, a, an analysis uh, what we call uh, that we expect in one year everything can be back to normal. I think that is near to impossible. Uh, I think Japan took many years to recover after World War II. <laughs> what we call, so what we call when we discuss about uh, Afghanistan, at least there are six parameters that you have to understand to make, to make a fair uh, analysis uh, on the one year uh, of uh, Taliban administration. Number one, uh, there is no balanced reporting uh, on Afghanistan, especially on the Taliban. It is not balanced. The voice of Taliban uh, is almost negligible, uh, what we call, uh, compared to the narrative that we listen from the media, uh, from, uh, from the West in particular. It's, uh, the narrative is not balanced. And the voice of Taliban is almost negligible. Even they are given, uh, if, 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 even if they are given uh, what we call uh, uh, the space, but even it was concluded in a very negative way. Okay, I am telling from from uh, what I see uh, before entering uh, Afghanistan. If I read all the reports and all the analysis, nobody want to go to Kabul. <laughs> nobody wanted to go to Afghanistan because it is so scary, you know. But when we step down on ground zero and see for yourself and meet them face to face, then you realize that it is not as bad as what is being portrayed uh, in the media and the, in the analysis that has been written about them, number one. That means there must be a, a balanced reporting to understand better before we make a, a, a proper an, a, a analysis on, on Afghanistan, a fair analysis. On, on the Taliban uh, government. Number two, one, 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 to, one need to understand that uh, Taliban and uh, American and the West, uh, it is a, a kind of a battle of ideology. Okay, uh, it is a clash of civilization. <laughs> if, if we make it uh, simply put to understand it better, uh, for the past twenty years, the the the, the Western liberal democracy. Uh, values has been uh, forced on the people of Afghanistan uh, and uh, the Islamic version of Taliban is being suppressed. So when they took over the country, they will do what we call the same. They want to, 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 to project their understanding of Islam. Uh, and, and, it, and, and they think that, that, that the Western liberal uh, democracy is not suitable for Afghanistan. So this, this, these are the, the, the what we call the, the clash of civilization, uh, the battle of ideology that you have to understand why uh, the Taliban is behaving as such, uh, and why the, the, the West are behaving as such. Uh, number three, what we call uh, you have to understand that uh, the Taliban government is still under international economic sanction. They cannot move. After one year, uh, the, the sanction is still in place. How are, how are they going to rebuild their country if the sanction is still continuing? Okay. Uh, and number four, there are seven billion or so Afghan money is being freezed by, 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 by the American administration. So how well, these these are their money? Uh, what, what 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 they are going to do without uh, funding uh, 
uh, and and it's their own money that has been freeze till now. So what we call, if we expect uh, with all this uh, constraint and sanction in one year, I, I don't, uh, I think it's not fair to 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 analyze Afghanistan to be back uh, to normal, uh, considering a lot of constraint and pressure upon them. Number five. You have to understand that the Taliban leadership lack of media sophistication. Okay, they don't understand how to speak to the language for of the global community. If they say uh, the school uh, is closed, what they mean is to 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 can contempt uh, temporarily close for time being until we find ways and means on how uh, to to provide school uh, for the girls within. The Islamic Sharia within their understanding of the Islamic Sharia, according to them, what we call education, uh, uh, is running injunction. It mentioned that everyone must read. It doesn't mention that only men can read. That means education must be given to men and women. But what they mean is a temporary uh, closure until we find ways and means on how. Uh, the girls can go to the school from their understanding of the Islamic perspective. So these are uh, number five factors that we have to understand before we, we, we analyze one year of the Taliban administration. Number six, you have to understand that there is a big brain drain. Okay, top level government, top business people are leaving the country. And they are encouraged to leave the country, and and what the Taliban uh, when when they go to the offices, all the top the policymakers they are not there, especially the women uh, leaders, they are not there. Uh, what they have is a, a middle uh, level of administration. What they have is 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 only few top leaders they are still around, but in majority, what we call uh, the, the the leadership in the government and the business sector. They have left the country. So based on this factor, what we call, uh, we have to uh, understand that uh, analyzing a one year uh, of uh, Taliban uh, rule, uh, you must not forget about these six factor, six factors uh, before we uh, analyze them fairly, uh, considering that they are under external pressure. Next. My first mission uh, to uh, Afghanistan is purely on humanitarian mission because winter is, is severe in Afghanistan and, and we are able uh, to brought in small amount, it's five ton uh, of uh, assistance, winter clothing, foods and whatnot, uh, what we call, we take a flight directly from Kuala Lumpur to Kabul uh, and it was organized and assisted by a Buddhist group. Okay, uh, we invited the Buddha Light International Association to raise uh, the relief uh, for Afghanistan, and we want the Buddhist monk to come and deliver to the Taliban. The idea is to see whether the Taliban uh, there is a, a kind of flexibility. Or they can accept uh, other races, and of course, uh, when we talk about Taliban, uh, we always remember uh, about the the, the the biggest statue that had been destroyed when they took over in in 2000 uh, uh, in the first administration of Taliban. So it went it went very well because the the the, the monk is a lady monk <laughs> wearing uh, Buddhist clothing. And, and it was well received by the, the Taliban, meaning to show that they are ready to accept international gesture if you understand their mindset on what they, are, they have suffered for the past uh, 20 years or so. So what we call, we established a Malaysian Humanitarian and Development Center uh, in Kabul. The idea is to be a center to assist uh, any Malaysian NGO or international NGO who need our assistance to deliver uh, what we call uh, AIDS uh, that is needed badly by the Afghans. Uh, the situation uh, for the first six months, it is quite 
uncertain and fragile. People, uh, what we call in the city, we can see that people are still scared. The what we call, uh, and uh, there are many checkpoints, and and Taliban soldiers is everywhere, you know, uh, and 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 the the, the the feeling of tense, uh, what we call, is there, and we can feel it. The the, the shops, uh, the women uh, are are not not really visible at that time. Next. And we, we we visited government offices, and we we found that that the government offices could not function effectively due to massive brain drain among top official living Kabul. I can we can see that the Taliban minister with the Taliban uh, soldiers around him, and 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 few uh, officers from the last regime who are still uh, working over there, and and uh, it is not. Uh, in a very orderly manner. And uh, mind you that 20 to 30% of women workforce are not allowed to work for a time being. Yeah. Uh, the women uh, who are working uh, in various ministries, they will go to the office and sign to show that they attended uh, the office hour and they will go back and they will receive uh, part of the salary because they couldn't find yet uh, a a proper mechanism on how to deal with women working uh, in the government sectors. So we have to understand, this is the understanding <laughs> of the Taliban. We have to accept that for a time being because uh, they have been fighting for the past 20 years and they have no time to see the world have been revolving uh, from Islamic perspective, from many fronts. They are so focused on the war against the occupation that they have hardly at any time to understand that the new, uh, what we call, interpretation of Islam, the, the practice of Islam from all over the world. So we have to understand from that context. Next. I took the opportunity uh, in my first visit to meet all leaders, including the non-Taliban leaders. It is quite interesting. I've met uh, more than six minister from the, the Taliban minister from the foreign minister, from the mining minister, from the education, higher education minister, from the refugee and whatnot. Okay. And I took the opportunity to meet three non-Taliban leaders. I met uh, former President Hamid Karzai. Uh, I also, we have had a very good discussion for uh, almost one hour with him. And I met uh, Gulbuddin Hekmatia, former Prime Minister during Mujahideen time, uh, and we have a long discussion on how we look at the new and the future of Afghanistan. And we have met also former uh, Foreign Minister uh, Abdullah Abdullah in their residence. Okay. Uh, before I proceed, if you look at downstairs, you look at the Buddhist monk, a lady Buddhist monk, and uh, the Taliban leaders uh, receiving them uh, when they arrive in Kabul. Uh, in, in last February. And, and they are being well received uh, by the Taliban leadership uh, at the point in time. My conclusion uh, after meeting uh, the Taliban uh, ministers and the non-Taliban leaders, and all of them seems to agree that they are tired of the 43 years of war. 10 years under the Soviet occupation, 20 years under the American uh, uh, occupation and 13 years fighting among themselves between the Taliban and the Mujahideen. And together, 43 years is a long, long years. And we have lost one generation of, of, of Afghan who only know nothing but war and killing and bombing. So basically, all of them agreed. Uh, President uh, Karzai mentioned to me that only if Taliban can go in the middle, in the middle ground, we will come into the middle ground and let us find the middle ground that is acceptable by all. We cannot accept Taliban uh, whatever you wish, but we have our say, we have our experience in governing Afghanistan. Of course, we have made mistakes. So if we can go in the middle, we can come in the middle and let's find the uh, middle way on how to develop uh, Afghanistan together. Uh, same sentiment is being said 
by Abdullah Abdullah and same with uh, uh, Gulbuddin Hekmatia. And, and, and even though all of them disagree uh, the way uh, Taliban uh, dealing with the girls and women that cannot work, but still peace is so important for Afghan right now and we can try to engage and work slowly with them without forcing them what need to be done, telling them what need to be done after 20 years of war, give them some space and time uh, to consider, uh, to back on their feet uh, and back to normalcy. Next. What kind of support Malaysia wish to provide to the Taliban? On the 15th to 21st of July, 2022, we were invited by the Minister of Industry and Commerce, uh, Haji Nuruddin uh, Azizi. He said that uh, now we have uh, completed one year establishing, focusing on security and stability. And we have completed that. Basically, Taliban government managed to secure and to provide uh, peace and stability for Afghanistan. But what we need from you now is please facilitate how to rebuild Afghanistan. We know how to fight a war, but we have almost zero knowledge on how to rebuild Afghanistan into a modern state. So we were invited because in the last February, we told them that we have some experiences uh, in assisting uh, developing countries on, on uh, after independence. We are offering that and it was uh, accepted by Minister Azizi and he invited us uh, to have a, a, a what we call uh, a seminar on how to rebuild Afghanistan. Next. So according to him, this is the first time after 11 months of Taliban administration, we are able to convene from all top leaders that we have to sit down together and start thinking on how to rebuild Afghanistan for the first time after 11 months. So he invited all leaders from various parts, uh, from various departments, and we introduced the lock framework analysis workshop on how to facilitate uh, the planning and strategic planning and how to rebuild Afghanistan. You know better, we are only to facilitate. We don't tell you what to do. We are going to facilitate you based on our whatever experiences that we have. So Organization of Malaysia Afghanistan Initiative was established purposely to provide this facilitation. Next. Dato Azam, it's at mute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, Thank you. okay. So these are some of the areas to give you an idea of what we have discussed for three days with them, and we divided them into ten groups, and uh, we have ten facilitators from Malaysia. We talk about mineral exploration, the infrastructure, the sewage system, the water supply, 5G telecommunication, electric power system, zakat and taxation education system, food industry, and textile industry. From all the ministry, they come with their own ideas. What, what do they have? And from what they have, we start developing on what, how to approach and how to work and how to design uh, a proper strategic planning. Uh, and mind you, out of these 10 uh, facilitators from Malaysia, we purposely brought in three of them are women, you know, and three uh, group are being led, facilitated by women. Interestingly, on the first day, there was a kind of reluctance. There was no woman participation among the Afghan, you know, and we have three Malaysian uh, women facilitators. For the first day, it is kind of uh, awkward. They are just trying to adjust. But on the second day and the third day, they see them not as a woman, but as an expert as a facilitator who are going to help them. That means they can accept uh, woman leadership uh, from that uh, small experiences that we have had. Next. 
uh, what kind of relationship we want to build with Taliban administration. Okay. So what we call, based on ground zero, based on after 11 months uh, of the Taliban uh, rule uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, next uh, slide. We see that OIC mission has has started operation from May 2022. That means OIC is already there in Kabul. They are operating there already and I've met them. I've met the Director General of OIC mission in Kabul, uh, Ambassador Said Ayash, and he said that Malaysia should come in. What we call all the OIC members can, can, can come in because OIC has already be there. Yeah. Secondly, we saw that there are few embassies already functioning. Turkey, Qatar, Pakistan, Iran, Indonesia, Saudi Arabia, UAE, they are already a functioning uh, what we call embassy over there. And the United Nations agencies are already in full swing. World Food Program, UNSCR, we, we have seen them all around, around and providing training and services uh for the afghans afghanistan and interestingly we saw us aid is already opening its office and already started started giving humanitarian aid in afghanistan in a big way it was mentioned by the deputy minister of education that us aid is helping us in paying uh, salaries for our teachers that has not been paid for the past six months to seven months and interestingly, what we call the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Council of Foreign Ministers meeting held on the 28th and 29th July in Tashkent, Uzbekistan. It gave a strong indication towards recognition of Islamic Emirates of Afghanistan. That means things are moving as it should be. Uh, in matter of one year, for me, this is a great achievement considering all the constraints that they are facing and, and, and they, are, they have no experience in running uh, a country in a modern, uh, full modern uh, state, uh, I think uh, this is uh, a great achievement, uh, a progress in, in Afghanistan. Next. Next slide. So to me, what we call recognition of Afghanistan seems imminent, provided these are the issues that has to be settled. That means a formation of an inclusive government. Okay. They have had, as mentioned by Ambassador Yamamoto, they have they have had a lawyer Jirga uh, discussing about the future of Afghanistan. But uh, Karzai, Abdullah Abdullah, and uh, Hekmatia was not invited. And we asked them why did why didn't you invite all the non-Taliban leaders? They say this is only for the tribal leaders and the religious authorities. The political leaders will come later on. You know we are we are doing it step by step. That was the answer uh, that was given to me when I asked why Hekmatia, uh, Karzai, and Abdullah was not invited and that lawyer, Jirga. They said they are going to be invited, but it's going to be a step-by-step -step approach. Uh, and then the issue of opening school for, for the girls, the, the understanding of women's rights in Islam, what we call uh, this has to be done and we have to engage with them. And I'm happy to share with you that OIC, uh, is uh, taking a proactive uh, move whereby they invited uh, notable ulama from the Muslim countries to visit uh, Kabul, yeah, to visit Afghanistan. Last June, uh, they, 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 they were there. Few of them came and they have a heart-to-heart -heart discussion on the women's rights in Islam, women's rights to education, women's rights to work uh, with the Taliban top leadership, uh, the, the ulama. And this is going to be a, a continuous dialogue with them because we are talking about this is the understanding uh, of Islam that we have to deal with them. Uh, it's a matter of time. Uh, I'm sure that the, the school for the girls will be open soon, provided they understand and the preparation towards uh, the uh, school for girls uh, is uh, pu fully prepared uh, by the, the, the school itself. And of course, the equal rights to the minorities has to be given. Uh, the, the Tajik, uh, the Hazara, uh, the Uzbek, uh, uh, apart from the what we call uh, the Pushtun, 
it has to be uh, given the some kind of uh, rights and guaranteed by the constitution so uh, all in all i would say i'm, I'm not here to to whitewash uh, to say that taliban is okay <laughs> but uh, i would say that uh, give them a chance one year is not enough for us to make a conclusion yet but if you keep on engaging with them this is what malaysia is going to do we are going to engage with them and uh, by engaging i can see the opening up of the mind of the leadership will be there and it will be back to their normalcy in 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 a matter of time so these are some of the photos that we have met uh, to represent that they are as open as we are provided we engage them and don't tell them what to do show them how to do it and this approach i think would be more effective and more acceptable by them thank you very much for listening to me one year is not enough to normalize everything. Of course, it's very difficult to do it within one year. I agree with what he said. We should have longer perspective. We should engage them and continue dialogue, which is very important, which was very impressive from his presentation. How do we pursue the possibility of dialogue? Uh, what can Japan do? These are the things that uh, we really thought that we must uh, think. Now we will go to Q&A. We only have 15 minutes or so. So several points were raised. So several questions will be put together. And then we will ask uh, the uh, two presenters uh, to respond. Some English questions. In what way women and girls' uh, situation would be improved? How to improve uh, women and the girls' situation? In concrete way, I guess, uh, this is what uh, the questioner wanted to do, uh, wanted to ask. It's not done overnight. Uh, Dato Azam said that uh, uh, shortly uh, schools will re reopen. So little by little, we may see some signs of uh, improvement. If you have any opinion of uh, improving the uh, girl situation and women's rights uh, in concrete way, please uh, tell us about those concrete, concrete ideas. Other questions? This may be a comment, not a question. Listening to the uh, presentation, we did two speakers. Uh, we I agree completely with the two speakers. After all, the main actors of uh, Afghanistan uh, are Taliban's. We shouldn't interfere with the internal affairs. We should talk with the Taliban government. Uh, it is wiser for us to get engaged and continue talking. Otherwise, uh, the, uh, they will come under the influence of the Chinese Communist Party. So in, his, uh, in their presentations, it was uh, alluded to. So this is a question to Ambassador Yamamoto. Now, how women's situation and girls' situation can be improved concretely? Uh, this is the question to both speakers. So, next question. This is uh, directed to Ambassador Yamamoto. The uh, nation building of Afghanistan going forward will require international understanding, but in the final analysis, the US government's attitude will dictate the future of the situation. Going forward, the uh, American administration may change from Democrat to Republicans. If uh, it happens, uh, what kind of a change would happen and what kind of discussion Taliban government is uh, having now, if you know? The Washington policy could change substantially, but uh, international community should have a uh, consistent approach in dealing with the Taliban government. Uh, so is it done by international community in this way? Ambassador Yamamoto, if you know, please respond to this uh, question. The last question. What is the next step? to break away from the current situation. Uh, what kind of steps, uh, what country, what the stakeholders would play, what kind of roles, which would accelerate the change in Afghanistan? What is your view about that? So this is the question addressed to uh, two speakers. So what about the next step? 
what is going to uh, be the next step to break away from the current situation? Uh, what country, like Malaysia, Islamic country, or other stakeholders get involved? What kind of countries and what kind of stakeholders uh, could play what kind of roles uh, to break out from the current situation for the betterment of the situation, to accelerate uh, the uh, improvement of the situation? So I have put all the questions into one lump in the interest of time. So I will turn to Ambassador Yamamoto to respond to the questions, America and women's, and what, what about the next step, steps? Three points, Ambassador Yamamoto, please. Thank you, understood. About the United States, during the Obama administration, but I have become the special representative and I have been the special representative throughout the Trump administration. One thing I can say is that there are no, not much difference from administration to administration. Uh, the policy vis-a-vis -vis Afghanistan have not changed that much, even though the administration have changed in the United States. Of course, the top leader may have a different uh, uh, the thinking, uh, the president, uh, 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 the Obama's administration, uh, Vice President Biden, who was quite critical uh, in for United States going into Afghanistan. But as Obama administration have changed uh, to uh, the uh, Trump administration, although the people have changed, uh, the government administration have not changed its policy at all. Uh, when I talked with uh, the U.S. ambassador uh, in Afghanistan, uh, the U.S. government's attitude have not changed that much. That was my understanding. So the U.S. policy vis-a-vis -vis Afghanistan, I don't think it will change that much, even though administration may change because uh, it is dependent upon uh, the American people's attitude. But it is not that, that uh, optimistic uh, because uh, the uh, the U.S. Uh, the public are uh, quite the difficult in that we should not succumb uh, to the Taliban. Those who have not been directly involved, uh, but uh, those people who think that we should be more flexible uh, and uh, to be engaged in Taliban, uh, but some are still very adamant uh, that Taliban would not change. And as that that uh, uh, Azam has said, we do understand fully, we experts do understand fully uh, that uh, uh, things would not change that much in just one year, and we should wait and give time to the Taliban. But I don't think U.S. government would be that lenient, and I don't think they would change that much. So in what way uh, the leadership uh, should be exercised? Uh, the U.S. Uh, the government is still the biggest donor and biggest uh, uh, the country of giving aid to Afghanistan. So who would be able to substitute the U.S. aid? There are two things we can consider. And the two things need to work uh, closely together. I think United Nations uh, should uh, step in. Furthermore, United Nations should also change. United Nations should be much bolder and more courageous because United Nations is representing all the different countries and uh, uh, do respect diversity. That's to say different countries having different values. And that is being uh, orchestrated by United Nations. And United Nations is also deeply involved and uh, does know the reality and should work closely with the countries like Malaysia and other neighbors who are closely involved with Afghanistan and including Japan as well. But the United Nations should always lead should always be in the lead position. And the United Nations does have the expertise, but whether they have uh, a leeway for political maneuver or not, that uh, may be a question. And uh, as uh, Dato Azam is with us today, the Islamic states, their role is very important and crucial, I believe. When I discuss with uh, the Taliban, and as Dato Azam has said very properly, as an ideology, liberal democracy cannot be accepted and unfortunately this is a reality so the international community thinking about uh, the future we have to have understanding that liberal democracy may not be acceptable so we need to still have a dialogue and with uh, the leaders in afghanistan especially the taliban can feel safe to be 
involved and engaged with the international community, we need to gain the understanding. These two are very important about women and girls. To be very frank with you, everyone needs to be involved. When I say everyone, there are different levels already in more than a dozen or so provinces, girls' education are already uh, being done and continued. The Taliban is saying officially that they're not uh, yet uh, prepared. It is not that they forbid uh, the girls to be educated, but they're not really uh, prepared. So uh, the Islamic states and the neighboring countries should appeal strongly to the Taliban uh, that girls need to be educated, but it is also costly. It's quite expensive. So uh, perhaps assistance should be provided by the Western countries as well. And Japan is able to think from a holistic point of view that we can work closely with the United Nations. Uh, Japan can play an important role. And for women and girls, Japan is in a unique position that we could provide the necessary assistance. So Japan should be more proactive in being involved in such a process. In addition, we have uh, uh, questions of minorities, Hazara clan, and the change of curriculum. And then uh, junior high schools, uh, people cannot uh, go to junior high schools. Bearing those in mind, Tato Azam, can you respond to the questions, women's education, uh, girls' uh, education? What about yeah. the improvement of the situation concretely? What can be done? Can you talk about it? That's what first uh, first point. Yeah. Next uh, steps. Second point. Uh, wh which stakeholder can play? Uh, can play? Uh, which stakeholder can play important roles? Can you, Lois? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Exactly. That was the question that I posed uh, in front of Minister of uh, Higher Education, Abdul Baki Hakani. You know. I see that uh, what we call uh, why you are not giving uh, the, the girls to go to the school. They say we want to have a totally uh, Islamic uh, Sharia compliant for our girls. There must be two separate uh, rooms for them. There must be separate buses for them. And, and even our budget will be double. Uh, by providing uh, total separation between girls and boys. Uh, it is, it is what we call, uh, but we, we, we lack the fun, you know. For example, we need uh, classrooms, more classrooms. We need uh, more teachers. We need uh, more buses. We need more hostels for them. So it will take some time, uh, what we call, uh, so not what we call the Quranic mention that the first ayah in the Quran it mentioned that Ikra read in the name of Allah. That means uh, read meaning to say it doesn't mean only for men. They understood very well. So give us some time. So maybe this is where I think Japan can 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 provide a, a, a practical solution. We need buses, okay. We will provide buses. We need uh, more classroom, we will do it. We need more teachers, okay, we will uh, provide uh, so i think it is a matter of time uh, and uh, abdul baki hakani wanted to visit uh, uh, countries to see for themselves on how other countries uh, are treating women in terms of education but the problem with him his surname is hakani <laughs> so you are not allowed to travel <laughs> you are forbidden to travel <laughs> you know this is where the sanction is, is hampering for the development of Afghanistan. Okay. I, I understand truly, you know, I'm Hakani. I cannot travel under Hakani name because I'm a terrorist by, by their definition. And we are not terrorists. So, so these, are, these are the hindrances, what we call. So I think uh, I'm, I'm saying from their perspective after meeting them and, and asking them frankly, why you are doing this? And then on the question of uh, election. Their, their point is very simple. Uh, my vote as an uh, ulama, how can't uh, I have only one vote? 
and this laborer or young uh, student who are allowed to vote, they have one vote. You think it is fair? So we believe on the lawyer jirga. So as uh, Ambassador Yamamoto mentioned, that this Western liberal democracy cannot be forced on them. They want to have their own uh, understanding of Islamic Sharia and Islamic Shura. And for them, lawyer jirga is the best mechanism on how to resolve uh, the idea of democracy that is being forced on them. So I think it is a matter of time if we keep on engaging with them. Uh, I think Japan, I, I'm, I'm quite happy to, to, tell, to, to share with the audience that we have a very strong goodwill uh, in Afghanistan. The only reason is because many of the officials left in the uh, working in the Afghan in the government sectors, they used to study in Malaysia. You know, uh, they are graduate from Islamic University, graduate from many Malaysian university. There are hundreds of them, and they are filling important position in the government sectors. I uh, think so these are the goodwill that we have had. And we can share with other countries. Japan can work with us any any time. <laughs> you, you have a lot of experiences in rebuilding countries, and we have good network and good goodwill. We have goodwill. And why not we share together? So this will be my response to those questions. Thank you very much. There is uh, two more minutes and one more question, perhaps. Women teachers are now out of job, so there are teachers available. And about the curriculum, curriculum has been changed, and men are able to go to schools. It is only men going to school. And uh, for women, uh, the security may not be that good, so they're afraid to go to schools, perhaps? So, Dr. Azam, if you have uh, any more thing that you would like to add on what you have already commented, please. Yeah, we have we have tested the Taliban. How strong they are against the women working? Okay, one we brought in three ladies facilitators together with us, and they are conducting uh, a workshop among the one all men uh, uh, members, and at at in one dinner. We have had uh, a dinner with the uh, business men, you know, businessmen, uh, what we call uh, in one dinner invited by Mr. Azizi. And because we have three uh, ladies with us, they invited the woman business, business woman to come together, you know, in, 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 in that dinner. And the, they are expressing themselves because of your uh, attenders, we were invited for the first time after 11 months, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so we are engaging in a smart way not to tell them what to do, show them what to do. And I can assure you, they are not as bad as what you read uh, mm -hmm. in the newspaper and uh, in the media. They are, they are open minded. Uh, of course, of course, there are some who are the hardened one, but I can say that they are, they really want to build their country. They need the, the help from every part of the world to rebuild their work. They have tired of the war for the past 43 years. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We exactly hit the closing time. So, as you heard, matters relating to Afghanistan, not only what we hear from the media, we should hear from those people, experts, and those people who were actually on the ground. We will be able to have new perspectives in a variety of ways. We can think of a possibility of rendering our assistance to Afghanistan. There are, there is a Ukrainian conflict, but you uh, uh, Afghanistan question should never leave our uh, recognition. Um, Ambassador Yamamoto and uh, Dato Azam, thank you very much for your appearance. Thank you very much indeed for inviting me. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining. Thank you very much for joining. Once again, I will appreciate, I will express my appreciation to the two speakers. Thank you very much.